pirate ships, sword fights, and burly dads inhaling turkey legs. This is what makes Renaissance fairs truly great. But what we're exploring today is an abandoned Renaissance fair that has nothing of the sort, and no knight in shining armor can save this fairground from the force that is swallowing it whole. Deep in the marshes of the Virginia wetlands is an abandoned Renaissance fair that has been left to rot for over 20 years. We set out to explore this abandoned fairground, but with armed hunters lurking on the property with us, things didn't quite go to plan. The Virginia Renaissance Fair was first built in 1996, and it truly was magnificent. Medieval European architecture dotted the parklands. There were cottages, inns, and even circular guard towers watching over the guests. In the centerpiece of the park was a large replica sailing ship. On that ship, performers entertained guests with music and magic. It was truly like you were stepping back in time. In its prime, the park would attract hundreds of people from all over the country who wanted that genuine medieval experience. There were knights, maidens, a jousting arena, a mead hall, and dozens of other workshops and stores throughout the acreage. But shortly after the park was built, it started to experience financial issues. And while the park itself was as amazing as it was immersive, there was one major problem, its location. The dozens of buildings that make up the now abandoned Renaissance Fair sit on an isolated stretch of road with nothing else around. And this was an issue, especially for people who traveled from out of state to visit. With limited parking and few hotels, guests nearby and reenactors couldn't justify the trip. On top of having almost no accommodations, the park itself could be brutal at times. The pond at the park center was a magnet for mosquitoes, leaving guests itchy and aggravated. Ticks ran rampant as well. With all the tall grass and vegetation around the fairgrounds, this was a breeding ground for them. And to top it all off, the wet forest created a thick, muggy atmosphere in the summer that proved to be unbearable for most park guests. All these factors combined led to the closure of the park in 1999. Now, the owners had several properties that they were in charge of, and the Renaissance Fair was low priority. Some of the buildings were relocated or sold to other Renaissance Fairs nearby, but there were still tons of buildings left behind. Vines crawled up the park's towers and Bramble made its way through the open windows and doors. The path that guests would take quickly disappeared under the untamed grass and weeds. Over the years, the land started to attract another type of guest, the wildlife. Wild turkeys and deer started to make the land their home. Dilapidated buildings were perfect for nesting and taking shelter from Virginia's harsh winters. With all this wildlife, the property got the attention of a local hunting club who leased the land and still uses it to hunt to this day. And it was this last critical detail that almost got us caught. See, we didn't know it was a hunting ground at the time, and it was just our luck that there would be hunters out the day we were inside the park. And because I didn't follow my own rules of exploration, or do my research, we almost became the hunted. As we explored the decaying structures that were left behind, gunshots rang out in the distance. And this wasn't unusual, we were in rural Virginia after all. However, the situation took a more dire turn when those gunshots got significantly louder. We found ourselves pinned towards the back of the Renaissance Fair. We realized the danger we were in, not only were we in the firing path of the hunters, but we were also parked up towards them, meaning we had to go towards the gunfire. We began to make our way towards where we had parked, keeping the abandoned buildings between us and where we heard the gunshots. Trying to maneuver through the property without using the trail was tedious and painful at times. Thorn bushes covered much of the area, but we needed to keep out of their line of sight. We suddenly hear voices. It's the hunters. They're walking along the path, talking amongst themselves. I peer out from behind a corner to see them vigilantly scanning the tree line. Were they looking for us or tracking an animal? Either way, I did not want to find out. Their voices gradually pass us, and we get back on the trail behind them. And on our way back, we found what they were shooting at. One of them had killed a wild turkey, blood and feathers still fresh on the trail. After what seemed like an eternity, we finally made it back to the car. Thankfully, nobody blocked us in, but more importantly, nobody was mistakenly shot. Looking back while telling the story, it's, it's clear just how dumb we really were. Today, the Renaissance Fair still sits abandoned, and the forest slowly reclaims the land around it. I would still highly suggest not visiting the site, at least not without permission. It's considered trespassing, and this is one of the few instances where trespassing can actually get you killed. But the Virginia Renaissance Fair is still alive and well. The Virginia Renaissance Fair actually moved its business to a new location, located in Spots... Spots... Spotsylvania? Spotsylvania? Spots... Spots... Wow. Located in Spotsylvania, Virginia, it's doing better than ever in its new location. Business for them is booming. What does the future hold for this abandoned renaissance fair? Well, 
probably nothing. Currently, it's still being leased by the hunters, and I don't see any of that changing. Unless the property is sold to somebody else, or the buildings are specifically removed, the Renaissance Fair will continue to sit, and continue to wither away with every passing season. If you guys enjoyed, hit the subscribe button below and tick the bell to make sure you never miss another video.